welcome to my YouTube video. In this video I'm going to demonstrate how to do a mattress stitch between garter stitch and stockinette stitch. So you can see that these two have different row gauges. We need to figure those out first so let's take a look at this one. And I can get three inches on here but you really need to get it off of a larger fabric but just for demonstration purposes I can count these rows and I'm getting, if I count these, I'm getting 21 rows in 3 inches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So that's 7 rows to the inch. On the garter stitch we're going to count the garter ridges. So let's start down here, get a full garter ridge, and we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 garter ridges. So, and a garter ridge is two rows, correct? You know that. You knit over and knit back, and that makes one garter ridge. So before you start seaming, you want to make sure that both of your pieces have the cast on at the bottom and the bind off at the top, or vice versa, but the, the edges are similar, and that you have the right sides up. These are both the right side of the fabric, right side of the fabric. And I can see that because I have my cast on as the same on both sides. Of course, it could be reverse stockinette and garter stitch, and then you'd be like this. So we're going to do it like this. We have a ratio of 21 rows to 14 garter ridges. So that would be one, two garter ridges for every three rows. That ratio comes down to two to three. So that's how we're going to seam this. We're going to seam three rows of stockinette to two garter ridges. So let's start out. I'll make this bigger. I'm going to show you the figure eight cast on. It's always a good one to know. So here we have the very selvage edge here. And we're going to pick up the stitches on this side. We're going to seam between the selvage stitch and the first column in. So there's a bar every time. And if you pull this fabric apart, you can see those bars. See them? So whenever we stitch or make a seaming stitch, we're going to go under one bar. That represents one row. Over here on the garter stitch, we're going to go under one purl bump on the edge for each garter ridge, which represents two rows. So we're going to start out by going between the salvage stitch and the first column in at the cast on edge and bring our needle up there as close to the cast on edge as we can, which is going to be right here. And then we're going to go to the same place over here and then I, I cast on without a knot. So this is the cast on edge right here from back to front, back to front, and then again back to front in the same hole here, being careful not to split your seaming thread. That looks good. So that creates the figure eight. And you can see our figure eight here. Let me pull it a little tighter. See the figure eight? And what that does, when you pull that tight, it aligns the two edges so that they're aligned perfectly across the bottom and you don't get a um, stair step there. So the last place we came up was on the stockinette stitch side, so now we're going to go under a purl bump on the garter stitch edge. We're going to come back to the stockinette stitch. We, that was considered stitch one. We're going to go under this bar. This will be That's our two of our ratio. So we have two here and two here. This is our, actually this is our first one, our second one. So we're going to go here. This is stitch number three and we're going to skip a bar because remember we have a ratio of two to three. So we have to skip a bar. That's that row. We're skipping it. We're going to go under this bar. So now if we look we have three rows here two garter ridges here. Then we're going to go under the next purl bump, the next bar right here. We go down in the hole where the yarn came up 
and go under that next bar. Go under the pearl bump. Let's see, we have two in a row there. So we're going to skip a bar. We're skipping this one. And going under the next one. The most important thing in doing mattress stitch is to not accidentally split through your seaming yarn. If you do that, the seam will not zip closed. And there's the next bar, see it? So we have enough here that we can zip this closed. And let's see what it looks like. That looks pretty good. Let's continue. Our last stitch was on the stockinette side, so we're going to go over to here to Pearl Bump. And it's time to skip a bar. Next Pearl Bump. Next bar. I'll speed this portion up till we get up to the top, and then I'll show you how to finish it off at the top. Okay, here we are coming up to the top. We're going to get the last one over here. It's tight. We're going to pull this closed. And then we're going to use the same sort of maneuver at the top that we did at the bottom, the figure eight, to close off the top. So we're going to go underneath the bind off here. This is your bind off. So we're going to go underneath the two legs of the bind off from front to back. We're going to go under the bind off here, front to back. And back over here, that makes your figure eight. You can see, well the tail's in the way there, but let's, let's bend that down. Cooperate! Okay, there's our figure eight. Can you see it? And then we're going to pull that tight. And what that does is that also creates that very smooth edge across the top. So there we have it. We have a seam of seaming garter stitch to stockinette. Let's take a look at it close. You can see the white thread if I pull it apart really hard but it makes a good durable seam. Let's look at the other side. On the garter stitch side, you're stitching right through the edge, so it's perfectly flat. On the stockinette side, we came in one stitch, so we do have a little bit. You can see the thickness there, and you can see here the seaming thread. On this side, you can't really see the seaming thread because it's on the edge of the garter stitch. Now, the most important things to take away here is that you need to get the row gauge of both pieces before you start. And yours may be different than mine. Just because I had a ratio of 2 to 3 does not mean that you're going to have a ratio of 2 to 3. You need to figure out your own ratio, do your own calculations. I calculate mine all the time. I never trust anyone else's calculation because my stitch and row gauge may be different from everyone else's. If you enjoy my videos, be sure to give me a thumbs up down there. Share them with your friends. There's a share button that you can click on and you can share it on almost every type of social media. I also have a um, group on Facebook that you can join. It's called Knitting with Suzanne Bryan where we have uh, a lot of people and we carry on conversations about technical aspects of knitting. And I have a group on Ravelry as well called Knitting with Suzanne Bryan. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel. If you subscribe, then you get notifications every time I put out a new video. All of my videos are of educational topics on knitting. I hope you come back and watch some more, and happy knitting.